Welcome to the peak performance video for the NS130 inflatable skiff. This video is going to talk about all the things that allow you to get the best performance out of this hole. This is a really fun, nimble hole that just really scoots on the water. It's very stable, but there's a couple things to know, especially when you're first starting out using the skiff. The biggest determining factor on maximizing your performance with this hole is a balanced load. The seat positioning here is going to allow you to avoid stern squat or that drag created by the stern at those higher speeds. You're going to kind of get up and glide really effortlessly on the top of the water. So I think this is a really good starting point for the seat, especially if you're using an NT300 or a comparable motor and a lithium battery. Now, depending on how you fish and how much gear you bring on the water each time, you may need to shift stuff around a little bit. And especially if you've got a second user on board, you're going to want to slide this seat farther aft. So you may, you know, not require a tiller extension handle with the seating positioned here and using it as a single user. One thing that really goes a long way for comfort is adding a 24 inch tiller extension handle. That's the ideal length for this NS130 inflatable skiff with, with the seat positioned up toward the front of the included track boards. That puts the handle right at your hip and you can comfortably maneuver the boat all day long. Another thing that you'll want to take note of is positioning of the utility rod rests. So I like to you know, position actually an the set that's included with the boat plus an extra set on the side of the seat that's more open. So I have the seat offset, which also allows me to operate the tiller more effortlessly. So I can stay comfortable all day long and then it opens up a lot of mounting space on the seat frame for that additional rod rest. So I like two there, one for my paddle and one for the second most fished rod that I'm using throughout the day. Um, when you're loading and car topping this boat, you'll want to put a lot of stress when you're tipping the boat up to rooftop it on the stern cone carry handles at the back. Those are really durable. And then you kind of avoid, you know, that wear and tear on the hull. We do have reinforcements on the underside of the hull and big generous side rub rails but you know if you're needing to drag the boat on concrete or something like that and you're by yourself you know those green molded carry handles at the stern are really resilient and can take a lot of abuse if you happen to get a little unwanted water into the cockpit you can go ahead and open up that self bailing drain at the back and just get up to speed a little bit and let that water flush out there's also an opening between the deck and the transom that allows you to fit a manual bilge pump in there if you need to rid water at a greater rate. One thing that plays into the performance here is generous D-rings throughout, right at the deck where the side chamber meets the deck. So you have a lot of opportunity to secure items down. If you're fishing, especially in big water, I highly recommend leashing your equipment or strapping it down so it doesn't shift around. That's going to keep things in their place and keep your load nice and balanced and performing as expected. One thing that adds to the overall performance of the boat for me as an angler is adding a second set of tracks up forward of the ones that we include with the kit. Adding that second set of tracks up forward of the seat gives me four additional mounting tracks for all sorts of gear. I like to put my fish finder, sometimes rod holders or storage bins up there. And so that really enhances the fishability of the watercraft throughout the day. I have my screen right in the line of sight, so it takes the stress off of my neck, and I have everything at my ready that I need throughout the day, just right in front of the seat. So reaching forward is a lot more comfortable than reaching behind me for a lot of things, and, and certainly it's a more ideal spot for a fish finder screen. The one inch thick marine grade transom is fixed to the hull. So that provides a lot of rigidity and integrity. The hull has been designed and optimized for three and six horsepower electric outboards. 
When you talk about peak performance on the water, one thing that I always think about is rod and tackle storage. So there's a couple things that I like to do. One, I mentioned using the utility rod rests on the side of the seat for my second most commonly used rod. And then there's ample storage underneath the seat. I like to face a couple rods forward and then I'll even face a couple rods back going off the stern. And there's a nice little nook right here where the transom meets the side chamber that kind of locks rods in. So if you lay them down there, you know they're down horizontally stowed and they're out of brush or overhanging cover or things like that. When it comes to tackle storage, I like to personally pack as minimally as possible, but you've got ample room to take anything you want. So if you had a big tackle box, I would position it sort of under the seat to help balance the load. Um, it really just depends on the size of the user and how much other gear you have on board. You want that boat to be postured really level when it's floating or idling, and that'll allow the efficiency at the higher speeds to, to be maintained. So, you know, it's important to kind of maybe have a friend on the water or just take note of what worked your first time out and adjust things around a little bit. That's the beauty of this boat is the adjustability and adaptability. So moving that seat forward or moving a tackle box slightly aft um, or forward can, can help balance that load. And that's definitely what you're shooting for to get the best performance. I like to leave about you know, a 12 to 18 inch gap behind the seat for standing. A lot of times throughout the day, I'll stand up and motor or stand up and paddle if I'm in thick vegetation. Um, and so I find that standing just behind the seat and using the seat as support to stand works really well. I hope you found the performance tips in this video helpful to enhance your experience on the water. Have fun out there and remember the way forward is electric.